We will have our business meeting now. The um, first item are questions or additions to the minutes of the annual meeting of 2022. Any comments there? Okay, then the minutes have been approved. The second issue is the treasurer's report. Joan, Joan Powell. Yep, have to had to unmute myself. Oh. <laughs> um, okay, uh, just briefly. Last September, we were able to open. We were able to establish um, the Alamos History Association as a nonprofit corporation in the United States and get um, the 501c3, 3c, what I'm sorry, um, status so that donations to the association can be tax deductible. And then with that, we were able to establish a bank account at Wells Fargo. So we have an official bank account. And at the moment we have a little over $1,900. Um, and then there's additional, um, 481 pesos in a, a little petty cash account that I used while, while we were in Alamos for uh, so, some expenses. Um, so we have, we had received dues from, well, now 42 members, although that the last one that check that just came when, was here when I got back to Arizona has not yet been deposited. Um, we also received a donation of $100 um, we had expenses of a $10 filing fee, which we'll get to pay every year to report to the Arizona Corporation Commission. Um, and our other expense was 2,000 pesos um, that were stipends for the interns on projects that you'll hear about in further reports. Okay, thank you. And now we'll have the standing committee reports. Errol, would you care to comment on the program committee? With the program committee, we want to thank everyone in Alamos that has contributed. Uh, with people like Tony, people like uh, Jim Swickert uh, that have contributed to our programming. And we're always looking for ideas. And we'll be sending a questionnaire out uh, to help get ideas for next year. This year we had 17 programs. Unfortunately, we had two that uh, through various uh, reasons, uh, we were to have 19, but we had 17. And that's uh, normally we have 17 or 18 during the year. And we need ideas for next year and beyond. Okay, library and archives, Joan. Okay, um, since I was able to um, be in Alamos for, for two months, these past two months, um, I was able to make headway on the, the backlog of donations of books and magazines and um, newspaper articles that uh, are in the library. Um, and I've got them... Um, Caught up on the books, still have considerable magazine articles and newspaper articles to get cataloged, but I have um, printed new catalog pages. So if anyone wants to kind of look through what's there in the various categories that, that we have materials in, um, their new pages are in the binder in, in the library. We have cataloged um, 569 items that includes books, magazine articles, newspaper articles, uh, historical. Um, I have newspaper articles there from early 1900s up through more recently, not all cataloged, but they are in the binders there in the library. Um, most materials are in English, but we do have 89 items in Spanish um, and uh, a handful in uh, like multiple languages, like English, German, French, or, or something like that. So that's my report. Okay, thank you. And Ellen Ryan, 
on the interviews. Okay, I've transcribed three interviews or presentations and put two on in January. The next one will go on next year. And then Linda Adams collected written stories from Bank the Wolsang, and they'll be they were added this year. And summaries of interviews from Carmen and David Diaz and Don and Doris Wilcox were also added to the computer. So we keep adding these in, in proper categories on the computer in the library. And no new interview occurred. But we have a list of people and families that we can interview and Trini is, I guess, still working with the students to try to get them to interview families. So we'll have those added when that's complete. And that's it. Okay, thank you. And Barbara Kiernan from the Pantheon. Okay. Well, actually, let me start first with the internship project, because I'm going to tell you about both, and I'll do it really quickly. But Tony, I want to thank you so much for talking about how important it is to involve the young people in what you're doing in the museum. And frankly, the Historical Society is a perfect place to bring in young people to get them interested. And the more we talk with them, the more we find out they don't actually know a lot about their own history. They may know not a lot about Mexican history. They may know about Benito Juarez, but what about our own presidentes and one thing? So let me just real quickly celebrate with you two years of a pilot project that we did in conjunction with ITESCA to bring on interns of college age students between the year of 2021, 2022, okay? And by the way, wait, and okay. At the bottom it says, that means proudly. Next slide, please. Okay, this, what I want to show you now is four interns that we've had over the past two years. Okay, you're looking at the combined group of four right here. And by the way, the guy on the left and the guy on the right, they're not interns. The guy on the left is David Warnes, our board member, who is also a mentor. And on his right, on the far right is Trini who is the maestro at and professor at the ITESCA. So I'm gonna introduce each one of those students to you individually. This is the night that they were celebrated. We presented these certificates to them and they received it. And thank you, Errol, for designing and creating these certificates. Next one, please. Our first intern was Danny. Da Daniela Balvanera Fierro Diaz, but let's call her Danny. She worked with uh, Linda Adams as her mentor. And what she did was develop a digital schematic that allowed us to literally locate all of the graves of foreigners in the Pantheon. And now they're divided into sections so that we can actually, if you wanna find out somebody who is last name A, that person I'll send you to, you know, B2, and you can find that grave right away. And Danny graduated. Um, she's going to graduate this year in civil engineering. Next one, please. This next year, and this is actually Danielle. So in one year, we had Danny and we had Danielle. Well, Danielle's school name is Luis Daniel Neyoy Garcia. And he worked with um, his mentor, which was Errol um, Zimmerman, on putting all those historical photos of the presidentes, framed them, and hung them. And if you haven't been, to the Palacio Municipal and seen that amazing room. What a collaboration with the city. They painted it, they created the space and Errol made sure that all those presidentes from years before are on display. And thank you, Danielle. Now this year, we were encouraged by the two students we had in the first year. And by the way, I want to thank um, Jean Gladkey and Lorna Costa and the Amigos for actually being the first year's um, referrals for the students. They were students that actually had been part of their program. And so with that success under our belt, with a lot of good feedback from our students, we learned how to make that program a little better. And then we said, okay, year two, here we come. So here's year two. Next one, please, Errol. 
And he is also Luis, but in this case, Luis Fernando Reyes Navarro, and we call him Fernando, as does he. And he worked with David Warnest, and who actually prepared a remarkable presentation of Benito Juarez. I think all of us know a lot about Benito, but we know a lot more now. You know, we also know about people like Zuluaga and things like that. So thank you very much, um, David, for being Danielle's mentor. And the last one we had for last year was Alondra Maria Grajeda Castello. And her project was actually working with Trini and gathering oral histories and organizing oral histories that were gathered by students at Itesca. So she was like the um, organizer. Uh, she, kept all, she kept herding all those cats. And in the end, we have a wonderful digital record of their oral histories with their own grandparents. Okay, and final slide right here. Well, Ben Ultimate, I guess. This is a future AHA intern. This is actually Alondra's uh, sister who sat during this whole celebration when David was passing out things. And by the way, I have to thank my husband, Tom Kiernan, for taking all of these pictures. And um, he just couldn't not take a picture of this little gal. She's probably four or five, I'm not exactly sure. But she was going through that iPad, iPhone, you know, like the best of them. So thank you very much, Tom. And thank you to all of our interns. Each one of these interns not only got the experience of being mentored, but they were given um, $100 uh, in stipend that was for them to use as they chose. But it wasn't payment for what they did, but it was in recognition of the value that they could bring to this. So um, we were really delighted. And the very last slide simply says, thank you and congratulations to all of our. Now, in terms of Pantheon, I have to tell you, I wish Linda Adams were here, but she, she's not. And she is really the prime mover of a lot of this. But I had the privilege of working this year with Joan. And Joan, you're amazing. The work you have done on gathering through ancestry, all of the histories of these people that none of us know, but they're in the Pantheon, they were foreigners, they came here, they came here for a reason. We're not sure always exactly why, but Joan has gathered as much information as we possibly can. And we have death certificates, we have naturalization certificates, and we are in the process right now I am in the process of helping Joan <laughs> put all of that bibliographic and resource material together. She's already got it mostly in digital format. Anyway, it's a project that's up, that's running, that come Day of the Dead next year, I hope any of you who might be interested in adopting a grave, you will do so. So that's my report. Thank you, Pam. Okay, thank you, Barbara. Errol, the Historical Photographs Committee, Okay, now I will go back to uh, and sharing my screen. Um, it's already, it was mentioned anyway about the uh, historic, the Presidentes, the new Gallery de Presidentes, and uh, that is in City Hall on the second floor. And we, the History Association, provided most of the funding for that. And uh, with uh, with my intern and I, we recopied 65 pictures. We got them framed and they were officially honored uh, in September uh, as the new gallery of Presidentes. And we had a meeting there in uh, November uh, to honor that. So I wanna thank everybody involved in that. And I think uh, we made a great contribution uh, to the city of Alamos uh, through that. And that's just a picture of that. And now um, I want to talk about, we're collecting old pictures and a lot of them we've got, we're getting help from our cronista, Juan Carlos Olguin Baldrama. And uh, he puts a lot on Facebook and I try to uh, take those out. Uh, we, we have families that we are in contact with that we're hoping to scan uh, their images. A few we have scanned, but we have a lot to go because we wanna build a digital library 
of high resolution scans for future exhibitions uh, you know, that we can have sponsored by our history association uh, and in the museum. So we're working on that. The, uh, the presentation uh, videos uh, that we have uh, up on YouTube and of course, anyone can see them uh, by just going to the uh, going to YouTube and Alamos History Association. Uh, and I just have a couple of examples here. We have over 30 uh, presentation videos, including this one will be on. And those videos are seen by anywhere from 40 to, uh, well, 35 to 50 people. And Trini's wonderful presentation on masks that he did in December uh, broke the records anyway for the number of views. But anyway, those videos come up and I wanna thank so much our committee members, Stephanie Meyer, uh, who's, who's worked with us and especially Umberto, who uh, sets up the auditorium, who does video for us. And uh, Umberto and I get these things online and uh, we just are constantly working and uh, we hope that we can get more and more uh, pictures and more and more visual uh, presentations uh, for the, the History Association. Okay. We have a new standing committee on special projects. And Errol, could you talk about your project? I tell you, I'm very excited about it. And it's something that Carolyn and I are working on. And we're working with the people in Alamos, but we're going to produce a children's book on the history of Alamos. And this book, we hope once it's done, we, we've kind of set a guideline of uh, 2024 uh, to have it completed. But when it's done, we hope it's uh, made available to all third grade students in Alamos, and we're following the uh, the guidelines of our of our guidebook uh, that Pam and Ellen and many on the book committee put together. Uh, we will have uh, illustrations and black and black and white illustrations and bilingual information about points of interest in Alamos, the church, the plaza. Uh, things that we have in our guidebook, we I've selected 20, and uh, we're making a draft right now. We will rely on Trini's assistance, especially in the language on what a third grade student in the school in Alamos uh, will be able to read comfortably. Uh, the the line drawings, uh, uh, kids can use colored pencils or whatever uh, to play with them. But we hope that the young people of Alamos in the third grade uh, in all the schools will learn the history of our community. And uh, that's it. Okay, that. great. The uh, last item is meeting the needs and interests of a changing Alamos. The AHA board has been discussing the possibility of departing from a focus on weekly presentations during the winter season. We're thinking of having a wide range of activities, including, for example, showing documentary films and feature films of cultural importance. But we want to know what our membership and friends are interested in. So shortly, we will email a questionnaire asking for your preferences. Please respond to this questionnaire and let us know what the future of the AHA can look like. Errol, do you want to add anything here? We'll be out within the week. And, uh, and we really want to hear from you uh, as we plan out, uh, you know, projects and activities of the association. Okay. Our, yeah. Oh, the guidebook committee. Okay. Right. Well, in the September of 
2022, we paid 3,437 3, 3, pesos and 72 uh, to print 300 copies of the book. Uh, this year we have sold uh, 51 copies so far. Copies been sold at Casa Maria Felix, Alos Bonita Resort Hotel, Martinelli's Cafe, and by Alicia Sanchez. Diane Carpenter and Kathy's Corner have purchased multiple copies where they get a special discount for that. We have 7,650 pesos and $520 uh, so far. Alfredo Ortiz is still our sales representative. Okay, I think we should mention that the 300 copies that were printed are the second edition of the book. It's not quite the same as the first edition. All right, there's, there's uh, uh, additional um, information in the book on mining and important people. Okay, thank you, Ellen. Are there any announcements? Old business, new business? Um, hey, Ann, just yeah. one last message. Pam had on her agenda a new business. And on that new business, she kind of anticipated perhaps something that we might be getting involved with next year. I want you to recognize um, Donna McGee, who's in the back and Pat Hamilton, they're trying to hide, but you know what, they can. You're gonna see them all around town and you're gonna hear a lot about them because they are going to, they are spearheading a celebration, a commemoration, I should say commemoration rather, and a preservation of information about Norbert, which was the hurricane that swept through Alamos in 2008. Well, next year, that will be 16 years on. We're gonna be celebrating 15 years. And so we are thinking that for our interns next year, one of the things they might get involved with would be working with this Project Norbert to gather interviews from their family members, to work as a focus group of young people to help us with translations. I know that everybody in AHA is gonna be interested in what's going on. And um, they are gonna be our point people there it's going to be lots of fun, lots of outputs, lots of things, including a book, probably commemorative plaques. Hey, Tony, we might even try to find a place in the museum for it. I mean, there's all kinds of things. I know Metz, so no. Okay. Anyway, um, just ideas, ideas that are coming up. So thank you. That was my input for new business. Just be aware, next year, Project Norbert. <laughs> okay, thank you. Then I guess I can announce that the annual meeting is closed. Thank you all for attending and contributing. Thank you, Pam. Thank you. What great, great work we've got in store for us. Okay, I'll end the meeting and thank you all. <laughs>